formerly known as Hulk Hogan, sued the gossip site Gawker for posting his sex tape online. It put internet privacy in a battle against freedom of the press. Well, Terry just came out on top in a big way, and he joins us for his first live interview since his $140 million courtroom victory. So, everyone, please welcome Terry Bollea and his attorney, David Houston. Terry, David. Thanks for joining the Hot Topics table today, guys. I just want to set the story up for those at home. What just happened? The courts just gave you $140 million in damages from Gawker Media because they say they violated your privacy by publishing a sex tape with, with Heather Clem, who is the former wife of your former best friend, radio personality Bubba the Love Sponge Clem. Okay, so when that decision was announced in court, you absolutely melted. You burst into tears. I can see you're emotional right now. But why was that moment? so emotional for you? Well, it, it's been so long. It's been almost three and a half years since the rumors started. And it's just crazy dark cloud that I was just living with. And it, you know, it hasn't stopped, but one of the problems I had was so many people in the media and so many people on the street were going, oh, well, maybe he's in on it. Maybe he's doing something to make money. You know, maybe it's a wrestling angle. And the whole time I said, guys, that's not me. That's not, I didn't do this for profit. You know, it was a horrible decision, low point in my life. But at the end of the day, they had a, a verdict sheet and I knew what the boxes were that were checked. Mm -hmm. And once they checked the first one, that was okay. But the second box meant that we won it and people actually believed me. And I had my head like this. And when the second box was checked and I heard the, the judge read it, that people actually believed me after all this time, the public believes me, and that made you I, I, I snorted and I went and all this water just poured out of my face and I couldn't stop. So oh. as they kept checking boxes, we left one upstairs with the team. I didn't even hear the number. David had to tell me upstairs what they awarded me. I was like, all you wanted was to be believed. That's all you wanted. Yeah, I wasn't in it for any other reason, but so it wouldn't happen to anybody else because their whole theory is if you're on social media now, mm -hmm. you're a public persona. So if you're getting dressed today and there's a picture of, a picture of you right now on the internet, that's okay with Gawker. And that's not right, especially when they said anybody over four years old. It's not oh, just wow. ordinary. There are others. But let, let yeah. me clear up a few things regarding the case so that sure. people know what we're doing here. These are questions you answer whatever, whatever you want to sure. say. Did you have a sexual encounter with your former best friend's wife on more than one occasion? Yes, I did. Okay. Were you aware that the sexual encounter was being recorded? No. You were not. Who recorded the sexual encounter? Because Bubba claims, uh, Bubba Clem, rather, is that his name? Bubba yes. Clem. He said that this tape would be uh, uh, the retirement for him and his uh, wife, Heather. Well, now that, I kn now that I've seen his deposition, read his deposition, he told the truth that I did not know that he set the camera, but he is the one that recorded it. So but he recorded it, okay. Who released the video to Gawker, and at any point did you ask that it be taken down? You know, the release of the video is kind of a long, complicated story. We know it went from a DJ in Tampa to a fellow by the name of Tony Burton here in New York, yeah. who then arranged to get it to A.J. Delario. At Gawker. So, so, Terry, why did you do this? Why did you agree to engage in a sexual encounter with your former best friend's wife? And do you have any regrets about it? I've got a ton of regrets about it. It's the worst decision I've ever made in my life, but it's such a long story. I'll give you the Reader's Digest version. Low point in my life, career, wife, marriage pretty much non existent. Yours. Yeah, and, and low point in my life. And it started out as, you know, I knew Bubba had an open marriage with, with his wife. They talked about it on the radio. With Heather. With Heather. Mm -hmm. And they started, you know, asking me, hey, would you do this? Would you do that? And I just said, guys, knock it off. Then it got to the point over a couple of years, it was almost like a joke, almost like poking the bear. And it, it kind of like became a joke between guys, stop it, knock it off. And then when I bottomed out, everybody was gone. Wife, kids were nowhere around. My career was tanked. Just everything was going wrong. You know, Bubba was there holding my father when my father took his last breath and died in my arms and Bubba's arms. He was my only friend. He was the only guy with me. I wasn't wrestling. I wasn't around the camaraderie of the guys in the locker room. I was really at a bad spot, and I knew it was wrong. It felt wrong, and I just made a horrible decision that I lived. Were you attracted to her at all? No, she was a friend. I mean, it was Bubba's wife. I'd seen yeah. her. Five or six, seven times. They invited me over one time for Thanksgiving. He had a racetrack a couple times ever. I really didn't know her very well. How did, how did you said that you were unaware that you were being recorded? How did you ultimately find out that a sex tape had been made and then was published online? Well, I didn't know at first. There were a couple still pictures that popped up, and I called David immediately. What's going on? And I called Bubba. I said, 
what's going on? What's going on with this? And he immediately said, you know, well, Heather must have done it. Heather must have done it, his ex-wife at the time. So it was just a rumor, but the stills came up. So I didn't know there was a sex tape out there in the beginning. At that point, we were trying to chase it down and figure out who had what, who had done what. And it's almost impossible in the internet world to get your hands on anything. It's literally like chasing smoke. Did you ask them to take it down right away? Yes. Okay. Well, what, what's, uh, you know, you have now, I think, set the, the threshold for what some, we hope, for, for uh, this kind of conduct and, and the accountability of it. You got 140 million dollars. What are you going to do with it? If you get the 140 <laughs> right, million yeah, right. dollars. Well, ways off. I, I don't have the 140 <laughs> yeah. million dollars. Why it's wouldn't just you a, get it? It's just a piece of paper. They'll yeah. appeal it and they'll, they'll, appeal. they'll do whatever they have to do for years and, years and years and years. Who knows? Um, but I, I made my point. Even if I lost, I made people aware that this shouldn't happen to normal people. You know, and, mm -hmm. and Especially any kids that are on social media, if the kids take pictures of them at high school. Right. This is the, Gawker's the ultimate bully, and I just didn't want it to happen to you or anybody here. It's just, some, we got an email yesterday, yes. two days ago, from a gentleman that had this happen to him, from his wife. She was thanking us for what we did. He committed suicide and killed himself. Mm. I'm telling you, it's devastating. It changes your world. When I shake his hand, if he's a Hulkamaniac, I'm thinking, what do you think of me now? Mm -hmm. Did you yeah. see the tape? What do your kids think? The kids go for Hulk Hogan videos to watch WrestleMania, and all of a sudden, Hulk Hogan sex tape pops up. Right. I mean, come and on, guys. A lot guys. of people think that's just a canned answer, and it's not, because we spend a great deal of time going over this, the motivation, why go forward, the exposure, and really, it was about trying to stop them from doing this to other people. Well, because exposure they was there. Did they want to put them out of business? They're Look, if they're going to practice what they call journalism that way, they should be out of business. No yeah. question. The exposure had happened when they put that team Nick, Nick, yeah. Denton, Nick Denton's their fearless leader. There's a bunch of talented kids that work for him. Mm -hmm. It would be great if they did a 180 and just mm -hmm. did great stories and good things. Don't you think they're under pressure to constantly bring up dirt? Yes. yes, and that's so. really yeah. what Gawker was about. It was required they have so many posts per day. Right. I know that you said that they messed with the wrong guy. Terry and David, stick around. We want to we talk to you about some of the racist comments surrounding this case, but also how you were able to tell your kids that this happened, Oof. which was, I know, really tough. Oof. Stick with us. We'll have much more with Terry Bollea right after this break. with Terry Bollea and his attorney, David Houston. And before we went to break, we were talking about the appeals process. David, this could get caught up in the, in the appeals courts. And Sonny, I know you had yes. a question about that. Yeah, well, uh, the lawyer for Gawker is claiming that posting the video was newsworthy under the First Amendment. And, because, and, and he's saying that because you invited public attention to your sex life, you can't claim that your privacy has been compromised. And they are appealing this case now claiming that the verdict will have these First Amendment consequences. What are your thoughts on that? You know, it's interesting because Gawker is left really with two choices, accept responsibility and apologize, which quite frankly we don't think we're ever going to see, or they need to bang the drum about the First Amendment. This was never a First Amendment case. We have spent three and a half years hopefully trying to give our view of this and have people understand it. The jury obviously did. The sex tape that was done without his knowledge or consent and then distributed without his knowledge yeah. mm -hmm. actually is potentially a crime. Video voyeurism, revenge porn. How can they legitimately claim is First Amendment protected? Mr. Delario on the witness stand admitted the sex video in reference to the private parts of Mr. Blair was not newsworthy. Mr. Denton claimed if it from was Gawker. gratuitous yeah. from Gawker that it was not protected by the First Amendment. This has never been a First well, Amendment case. Well, it's a privacy case. issue it's versus the been. First right. Amendment. Exactly. It's, right? Defense, yeah. the, the defense is saying that, that there's evidence that hasn't been put out there, that there are text messages between you and Clem, exactly. that, that you almost, they, they allude to the fact that maybe you knew that you were being recorded and that this happened multiple times. So what evidence are they pointing to? If you regard the text messages, it clearly points out Mr. Balea did not know. And also, if you regard the vast amount of that documentation, it indicates Mr. Balea did not know. But what's compelling in this case is what the jury said when they were interviewed in part. They said they watched the video and that sealed it for them. It was mm -hmm. obvious Mr. Balea did not know. But all the, all the text messages, I was going, why did you do this to me? Please yeah. tell me why you did this. Yeah. Why did you do this? Once TMZ told me that Bubba was turning the camera off saying, right. this is for our retirement. Well, it's an well, ultimate me... betrayal. You felt like they set he you was, up. He was my best friend. He, at that time, he was the only person I had. Wife, my son and daughter were gone. My wife, 
it just all happened. It was crazy. I want to <clears> I want to give you uh, the chance to um, and the opportunity to clear some things up that have been in the media. Um, on the video, <clears throat> excuse me, you made some comments about your daughter dating a black man. Yes, I did. And you also used the N word several mm -hmm. times and even called yourself a racist. What do you have to say about that? Probably the stupidest thing I've ever said. The people that know me know I'm not a racist. Um, when I got remarried, you, you know, my minister, Afro-American minister, Michael Beckwith, I go to predominantly Afro-American church, Agape Spiritual Center. Everybody that knows me knows I'm not a racist. Even the WWE knows I'm not a racist. They had to do what was best for business for their um, company. But for me, everybody that knows me knows that's not who I am. But you used an epithet, so why did you say that? Excuse why did me? you use the N-word? Because I was mad about the way my daughter was being treated, in my opinion. I thought she should get out of the relationship. I knew the young man for six years. We got along great. Mm -hmm. But things started going awry, and I was very mad at Brooke for not taking my advice. She finally did eventually. But yeah. I said something horrible, and I live with it forever. I you know, know. But I, that's not me. That's not who I am. You lost your career with the WWE right. and a chance to go in the Hall of Fame because of it. But I want to talk about your kids. You have two kids, mm -hmm. Nick and Brooke. Yes. No parent wants to let their, their children down. Do you feel like you let your kids down? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But what gave me strength was going to my children and explaining to Brooke and Nick what happened and to my new wife, Jennifer, who has nothing to do with this media, nothing to do with any of this stuff. And once they told me how they felt and they were behind me and they loved me unconditionally, it gave me the strength to put up with anything Gawker threw at me, you know, so that's why I moved forward because it was so important with their support to stop this type of thing from happening to other people. So they gave me the gas I needed in my tank to move forward. I don't know if I could have made it if my kids and, and Jennifer were not behind me, my new wife. How did you ask your kids to forgive you? What did you have to say? What was that situation like when they found out that their dad did some deplorable things? Well, I sat down with Brooke, you know, face to face, <laughs> and she loves her dad unconditionally like most daughters do. And she goes, Dad, I know who you are. I know you made a huge mistake, but please, this does not define you. We love you. Nick was cool about it. He goes, Nick knew how I felt about the situation, and I just wanted something better for my daughter, and he understood. Can what I ask you something? I want to ask probably you. Sure. I was saying just this week that, you know, let's just, let's say I made a sex tape, which is highly unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> let's say I did. But it would be popular. And then, yeah, and then, and then. Let's say you knew. I always say I'll do porn for the blind, okay? <laughs> but um, let's say I made a sex tape and Paula just sent it to Gawker. Right. And we were in, Not with me, we were in cahoots together and right. I made all this money. Gawker's attorney is basically saying that maybe you and your former best friend, uh, uh, Bubba Clem, yeah. did this together. You conspired the entire uh, thing just to make money. I mean, I'd like you to answer that because it's been bothering me, that potential thing that could happen in cases like this. When you start out with the analysis of all the facts of this case, we sponsored an FBI investigation into an extortion concerning this tape. It would be absurd for Mr. Blair to have been involved at any level yeah. and then go out and try to involve the FBI so they could find out. It's absurd if you evaluate all of the evidence. None of that makes any sense. It's these meaningless claims that are being fired out by Mr. I wouldn't ben. imagine but, that you but, would want the N-word out there either. No, no. Right. It's, it's the worst mistake I've ever made in my right. life. But on top of that, when this all started to come to fruition and came available for the public, Vivid and all these different other pornographer places called David and said there's an open checkbook right. for mm -hmm. Mr. Blair. Open checkbook. You name your price. Whatever amount you want. 12, 14, 15, 20 million. Yeah. It's not the case that's not what yeah, this yeah. is. You always maintain that this right. is an ultimate betrayal that your friend set you up. Yes. Are you still well, friends with him? No. Okay. And, and uh, we were apparently never friends. I, I, apparently not. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Terry Balea, we want to thank you for coming in and, and, and talking about this. David Houston, I know you guys have a long appeals process ahead of yes. you, but thank you so much for joining thank the table here at the video. Really. Thank, thank you. you. And we'll be right back with more hot topics.